Hey there, and welcome to the Whitwam Organics Weekly Garden Report question, answer, and uh, brief topic, topic discussion. Um, I'm your host, David Whitwam, and uh, thank you. Welcome. I'm glad you guys are here. Um, what do we have going on in the nursery? I'm actually filming outside today. Um, I got rid of the little Bluetooth microphone. Uh, it sounded really uh, garbled last week, so please let me know how I sound today. This is just going straight into my phone's uh, microphone. Um, I'm outside today in the nursery, as you can see behind me. Um, and let's see, what have we had going on uh, this past week? Oh, <laughs> so very interesting. Um, when we get our orders that come in through the website, uh, we have an option for you to uh, choose pickup if you're local. So you can choose pickup um, and come by and swing by and pick up your order. We have a social distancing station uh, set up out front with a table on it under a blue tent for people, uh, for people to, uh, we put the order out and let them know that the order's ready and they swing by and um, pick them up. So. I wasn't surprised that it started happening, but uh, over about the past four or five days, we had the uh, some orders starting to disappear. We thought the customers were swinging by to pick them up, and uh, then the customer would uh, call us from out front, uh, asking us where their order was. So somebody was somebody was stealing the orders. Um, on Saturday morning, um, I put a. Uh, a trap bag out <laughs> out on the table with a fake customer name and number on it. And I put inside the bag a note that says, you're stealing from a small business. Um, we're, we're struggling right now. If you're a gardener in the neighborhood and you need gardening supplies, then just, you know, you should have just reached out, out to us. We'll, we'll be happy to talk to you about um, uh, getting you hooked up. But if you didn't know, you are stealing from us. Oh, and by the way, you're on camera. So uh, that evening, I look out at the pickup station and the bag's gone. So I contacted my neighbors who all have cameras pointed to, you know, out of their front door to, uh, uh, yeah, somebody was stealing our pickup orders from out front. Um, so, so all of my neighbors have cameras pointed, you know, out. So they're pointed toward our front. Uh, I have too many trees in my front, so you can't see uh, anything from, from our side. So I contacted my neighbors and um, and and he went in, in the morning and you could see the bag sitting on the table in the morning. He jumped back and forth, back and forth. And lo and behold, he got the person, the person pulled up in a truck, uh, a car, sorry. And you can see the guy pull up in the car. He got lots of good shots of the car uh, coming up. And um, it's a fairly common car. Uh, but long story short, when he was leaving the house, uh, the next day, he was leaving the neighborhood and saw a very similar car parked in the driveway of, of somebody who lives about four or five blocks away. So I walked down there. Uh, and it was so it was important to me that the stealing stopped. Um, but what was really important to me was we had two um, swamp milkweeds on uh, on an order that was going out on Monday. And uh, I had to snag those two to fill the order from what he stole on uh, on Saturday morning. So basically, uh, the, the order that was going to go out on uh, Monday morning, it wouldn't have made it. And the, the milkweeds can take up to a year because uh, they do, you know, they grow and then they go completely dormant over the winter and then they pop back up. So once we get milkweeds pretty big, they're usually over a year old um, in the pots. And those were my last two. So there was no replacing them. So really, like my main goal was just to get those two plants back so I could get those uh, out on the order on Monday. I walked, I walked down to the guy's house. Um, I kind of walked past it because he had a dog out in the front yard uh, that wasn't tied up. So I was just kind of trying to check the dog to see what, what his demeanor was before I went and knocked on the door. And while I'm looking back, I, and I see the car. And it's totally the car that was in the, in the, in the camera videos uh, that my neighbors caught. And uh, I, as I'm looking back in the car, just, you know, double, triple check, I'm like, man, there's somebody sitting in that driver's seat. And so I start walking up, walking up to the car, and I'm probably still 15, 20 feet away from the car. 
and the driver's door flies open and the guy gets out and he puts his hands up and he's like, he's like, man, man, I didn't know we were stealing from you. I didn't know we were stealing. And I thought those were free plants out front. And so after talking to him for a few minutes, uh, I asked him to uh, show me his garden. Uh, I was being very friendly, trying to deescalate the situation. And he, um, he sh- took me behind, behind the house and uh, showed me where his garden was. And there were the milkweed plants sitting there still in their pots. So I was like, yeah, I just, I just need to take these right here. And so I, I grabbed the milkweed. And as I was leaving, uh, I kind of turned to him. I was like, you know, you didn't see the customer's names on, on the bags, you know, and the, and the order numbers. And he's like, yeah, I saw that stuff. I just, I didn't know what it meant, but I guess that makes a lot more sense now. And I'm like, dude, uh, I'm just going to give that to you. That's fine. Um, but you know, he was like, I'm not taking your plants anymore. I promise. Uh, so good situation. I got my plants back. Uh, we won't be putting orders out front just for whoever to pick up whenever uh, we'll be making appointments uh, from, from now on. Um, but that's a fun little story of what's going on in the nursery uh, real quick, like nuts and bolts kind of stuff. Um, we are uh, still planting uh, peppers, tomatoes, eggplants. Um, we planted those uh, last week. About half of them are up uh, by now. Probably got about another two or three weeks before we even think about starting to uh, up plant um, that stuff. And just to show everybody kind of what we what we do here, we have these um, we have these propagation trays that we plant in, and this is the. I want to say it was 392. Um, all of our propagation trays are the same dimensions. Um, so the lower the number, the uh, the more cells that you get. Uh, I mean, I mean the the less cells, the bigger the cells are, the lower the number. Um, and so this is a 392. We use this for smaller seedlings, uh, smaller seeds, um, and then it kind of goes up from there. The biggest one we have is a 98, and the cells in it are about yay big. That kind of so we start like melons, um, squash, uh, peas, anything with really big seeds, um, and then so I mean nothing too exciting uh, going on in the nursery. Uh, we did get our nursery inspection this week, um, and yeah, so I mean that's that's really it. We're just uh, up planting a few things and uh, some of the basil's into bigger pots. Um, we have lots and lots of hot peppers, guys. We have tons of Thai bird peppers <laughs> in the uh in the in the nursery right now um it's time uh for your garden if you want to start stuff by seeds uh, right now the the planting season um for your home garden i would say is any of the shorter seasoned summer crops you can get another round of that in and what i mean by that is like you know i mean i know people who do it somewhat successful but I'm just kind of going with the rules. You could always break rules. Um, so you don't want any long season summer crops right now. So things that take four, five, six months, like sweet potatoes, peanuts. Um, the sun's kind of set it on that. Um, so your shorter season summer crops, that would be anything that likes the heat, uh, thrives in humidity, or the long days of summer. Um, the other things that you get planted right now are your long season spring fall crops. Uh, spring fall crops, I call the Goldilocks plants. That's uh, anything that doesn't really thrive in the middle of our th- of our summers um, and can't take a freeze or or a frost. So I consider that stuff to be my spring and my fall Goldilocks plants because they don't like it too hot, they don't like it too cold, they want it just right. So you know it's the it's the crops that you're growing that you really want um, them producing when the weather gets absolutely perfect. Um, so the, uh, <laughs> the other thing you can get planted right now and get started on if you are feeling brave is any of your heat tolerant winter vegetables. Um, so that would be any of your uh, more th- uh, thicker uh, leafy greens. Uh, so that collards, kale, cabbage um it's a little bit of a gamble we are on on the earlier side right now but you know guys the october 1st is some 60 days away maybe less um and some of these crops could take a good 60 70 days to even um begin or get close to uh production 
So really you don't need it to cool off and be perfect for these plants the entire time they're growing. You just need them there the to be in the temperature range that they like uh, when, when they're on those last stages of maturing or, or when they're producing. So you can get most of the growing done now, even in the heat and humidity. And again, you might lose some stuff. It might be a little bit of an uphill battle, but you'll be ahead of the game. Um, once that weather turns nice, you already have a good uh, flourishing garden. Um, so that's pretty much it. Oh, yeah. Um, so it, anything that's uh, spring, fall, that's a long season crop. So 70 days or more. So that would include uh, some of your melons, pumpkins, uh, some of your winter squash. You get those going now. Um, and yeah, so that's that's it for our uh, nursery and garden report. Um, the topic I want to run through with you guys uh, today. What time is it? 541. The topic I want to run through with you guys today, uh, it's been brought up a couple of times this week. Um, one of my favorite things to talk about is uh, the basic. Now you could totally pick all this apart. You're more than welcome to, but just I'm trying to just keep it basic. I want to talk about the basic differences between conventional fertilizers and organic fertilizers. Um, I hear a lot of people, and they're not wrong, saying that once the food, whether it comes from an organic source or a synthetic source, once it actually gets into the plant, the plants can't tell the difference. And that is absolutely 100% true. Now, there is a huge difference in how the plant can access those fertilizers. For the most part, your synthetic fertilizers are all what we call soluble. Um, so they, they can dissolve in water. If you have a synthetic fertilizer that is not soluble or is considered slow release, that's because somehow physically or chemically, um, let's just say some of them have a, a polymer that's uh, bound with the, the soluble synthetic fertilizer that makes it into slow release. So however that casing or polymer breaks down is what is going to determine the speed at which that fertilizer is fed to your plant. Um, depending on what type of synthetic fertilizer you get, that can range anywhere from the temperature of the soil to uh, water can break it down, sunlight can break it down, um, just time can break it down. Uh, with those other things uh, mixed in with it. Very, very few um, become soluble based on microbial activity. Um, so that's the life that's in your soil. Um, little bacterias and fungi and protozoas um, that, that, that's teeming in our soil. Um, on the flip side, organic fertilizers. Uh, whether you're buying it in a bag and it has a guaranteed analysis on it, a guaranteed analysis, those are the three numbers that are on a bag of fertilizer. Those are percents. Uh, the first number is your percent of nitrogen. Second number is your percent of, uh, of phosphorus. And your third number is your, I'm sorry, uh, is, uh, third number is potassium. Um, with your organic fertilizer, whether you're buying it in a bag or you're using worm castings or you're using your own uh, compost, um, they all, all of those molecules or most of those molecules are in the form that the plants cannot get to. So it's they're what we call not soluble. <laughs> so they're not soluble in water. And they're actually, if you, you know, comparatively speaking to the uh, synthetic fertilizer uh, molecules, the organic molecules are huge. Um, and uh, so they hold in the soil very, very well, but the plants can't get them. They're basically uh, relatively useless to the plants. Now, what makes that uh, accessible to the plant is 100% the microbial activity that's in the soil. So the microbial activity that's in the soil is also dependent and in relation to the size of the plant that's growing in the soil. 
because plants do something really cool. If you didn't know this, I'm going to tell you right now. Um, <laughs> the green things in their leaves called chlorophyll does something called photosynthesis, uh, and that is converting sunlight into energy or sugars. And those sugars, uh, the plant actually, you know, we in school learned that the, the plants uh, make sugars with photosynthesis and that's their food. Well, then why do we have to put fertilizer in the soil if that's their food? Um, plants actually use very little of these carbons or sugars in their day-to-day -day activities. Uh, what they do with most of them is they actually come down from the leaves, they come down through the trunks or stems, and they push them out of the roots into the soil. That is a signal and a food for the soil to begin consuming uh, and breaking down organic matter that it in turn feeds back to the plant. So the biggest takeaway from this is that uh, with synthetic fertilizers, you're either going to be fully soluble, which means the plant's going to take up what you put in the soil. And then if it washes out of the root zone, the plant's not going to have any access to it. So if you're using soluble synthetic fertilizers, your plant's going to get a bunch of food and then not have any. You're using a chemically time-released synthetic fertilizer that is time-released based on uh, situations that have nothing to do with the growth rate of your plants. So your plants might have too much food at some times and not enough food at others. So it's very inconsistent. That soluble fertilizers are very good for um, uh, soluble fertilizers with the polymer, with the slow release like Osmocote. That's way better for, uh, you know, landscape plants or things that eat, uh, need, need to get their food a lot slower, uh, trees, but in your annual vegetable bed and, and with, with annual vegetables, you know, they need what they need and they need it right now. I mean, you go, go through these stages of like food, no food, food, no food. That tends to open your, um, your garden and your plants up to insect attacks. So um, putting organic matter or organic fertilizers in your garden um, because that food is not accessible to your plants, is not made accessible to your plants until the microbes begin breaking it down. The microbes begin breaking it down based on signals and food that it gets from the plant at the rate that your plant is growing. So as your plant grows, produces more sugars, pushes the sugars down into the soil, it activates more soil biology, which then goes out and gets more food for the plants. So you're much more likely going to have uh, your, your, your garden plants be fed more consistently using organic inputs versus synthetic inputs. So your synthetic inputs, just to recap, it's either a lot of food right now and nothing later, or a very slow trickle that's based on outside circumstances other than what your actual plants needs are. So we have about 12 minutes left. Um, I wanted to open it up to questions. We got lots of questions. Look at this, what do we got? All right, Patton, why are all these people getting seeds from China? That's a really good question. And I don't think they're randomly showing up either. All right, somebody oh, somebody was stealing plants. We already went over all that. Uh, and yes, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hey, Jay. I did get them back. Just the two that that I needed to get. I let him keep the rest. Hey, Kenny, that was your topic, Kenny. I wanted to cover for you the difference that I found uh, really between using synthetic uh, fertilizers versus organic fertilizers. Uh, I told you when you were talking about that, that you gave me my idea for my topic. Uh, Curtis Whitwam is in here. That's my brother. He's a great artist. Guys, check out Curtis Whitwam's uh, art. You can find him on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Curtis, if you can put a um, uh, a link for the best way for people to look at your art um, on the on the wall, if you're still in here, that'd be awesome. Okay, I would like to plant honey. Honey squash seeds. Is it okay to plant them in the ground now? So, as I was saying before, anything that I would consider to be a Goldilocks plant. So, in other words, they don't like it when it's way too hot, and you know that it can't take a frost or a freeze. And it's something that takes more than 70 days. Yes, you need to get that stuff going right now. Um, so if it's you're talking about a type of a winter squash that's 80, 90, 100 days, 120 days, get it going now. If you wait until the weather cools off in October, either 
we, we could get weather that's too cold for them before it actually can uh, ripen. Or what I've seen a lot with stuff from the squash family is if you don't have it in the perfect spot, actually the shorter days of uh, the end of November through December will actually get them, they'll, they'll get wiped out by powdery mildew because they're just not getting enough uh, sunlight that time of year. All right, John Stokes wants to know if it's true, if we can control plants like Batman controlled poison ivy. <laughs> oh, John Stokes. <laughs> uh, I, I know, but I can tell you this. I try and listen to my plants. Uh, I don't talk to them, but uh, I do listen and I try and figure out what they're trying to tell me. <laughs> All right. Hey, Tanya, thanks for tuning in. And we have another question here from Gregorio Guadalupe. Ever grown Florida cranberry? We grow them every year. It is one of my favorite crops to grow. Um, it is such a beautiful plant. You can eat the leaves all summer, and it gives us such a wonderful harvest. Um, biggest thing that I've learned with the Florida cranberry. Oh, we got a plant right here. Look at this. Thank you, Jessica. Yep, here we go. We have one right here. We got them in one gallon. I think we have them in four inch pots. Uh, we do sell them and we sell the seeds. If you're starting this late, I really recommend getting plants right now. Um, they are daylight sensitive, meaning they're going to start putting out the fruits that we're trying to harvest at the same time every year, no matter when you plant them. Um, depending on the variety, there are different varieties. Um, they're going to start pushing their flush uh, when the days get noticeably shorter, usually around the second week of October, some people to the first week of September, I mean of November. And I have heard of some varieties that start pushing out um, as early as mid-September. Um, so get them going, get them in the ground right now, um, or you're going to have tiny plants once they actually flush uh, and, and, and put out their fruit. Oh, Yvonne thought my thing on Goldilocks plants made her laugh. Yeah, it's a pretty good description, though, for your spring and fall crops because they are the um, – I, I said this to a group uh, the other day. Um, uh, it was to some teenage kids at uh, school, and uh, the teacher came up to me and said, they probably don't know who Goldilocks is. And I was like, okay, okay, so uh, we'll call the spring and fall plants the Kardashians. Ha, ha, ha. Because <laughs> they need it perfect, right? They can't handle it uh, too too far out of what they're what they're used to. Um, the best way to grow Florida cranberries, um, they definitely like good drainage. The only times I've ever had any problems with them are when uh, they were in a spot that did not have good drainage, and uh, it definitely wipes the plants out very fast. If you actually look at this one, the soil in it is extremely dry. We let them dry all the way out before we water them, and the plant is perfectly happy. <clears throat> Let's see here. Curtis Whitwam gave me his, uh, for my brothers in here, by the way, if any of y'all just tuned in. Um, his art can be seen at curtiswhitwam.org, C-U-R-T-I-S-W-H-I-T-W-A-M.org. Um, amazing stuff uh, featuring some of our Florida uh, landscapes and scenery. Um, Jay York, a beer and gardening report. Well, I told you, Jay, I'm going to have you on here. Um, and you can uh, you, you, you could take the lead and do it on wherever you want. So if you want to do a, a beer and garden report, you are more than welcome. What else we got? Okay. As a gardener, I'm so happy to hear and learn all the good things about Whitwam Organics. Been a fan for over 15 years. Oh, thank you so much. Jay York asked me, do you recommend starting plants indoors this time of year? Um, 
I, we barely start anything inside. However, if you look behind me here, um, we do have uh, a, a clear plastic stretch over our nursery area. And that's mostly to keep the pounding rains off so we can control the water. Um, if you can fashion something like that, um, and it's also, this is not a greenhouse. It's just literally a roof. It's wide open. Greenhouses hold way too much heat. Uh, but yes, Jay, we start all of our seeds outside. Uh, there's just a few things that we start indoors um, because if it's if it's too hot, we need them more down into the 75 degree range. And then uh, probably around September, there's some certain lettuces that we'll be um, putting in the fridge for about three days. And then once they pop, we bring them straight back outside. But what I think you're poking at is we definitely do not have like a setup inside with lights and start inside. So you take it gets to me that uh, all of the seed charts um, that you can look up and on seed packs, it all says start indoors. When what it really should say is start early, protect from environment. Um, because a lot of people start stuff indoors and the things come in leggy. There's definitely right ways to do it. I'm not knocking you if you do it and you got it down pat, but you can't just put seeds in something and start them inside because the second those things pop, they're looking for sunlight. And a lot of these vegetables need a lot of sunlight. And if you start them indoors and then bring them outdoors and don't know how to harden your plants off, they can actually get burned up really quick. So it is, what time is it? it I always got four more minutes. Okay. Thoughts on polystyrene starting trays. Um, if I know what you're talking about, those are the... Um, Jay, are those the styrofoam trays that you're talking about? Um, comment below if that's what you mean. The white, the white styrofoam trays that are kind of squared off. Um, I've worked with them before, and I just I destroy them too quickly. Um, I get some of these some of these trays that I have here are probably ten years old. I mean, I and they you know all sit outside. Some of them get a little cracked right there from picking them up, and that's about the worst thing that happens to them. So we get a lot of mileage out of our plastic trays. I believe these are polypropylene. Um, uh, but definitely UV rated. Um, those those styrofoam ones, I just, I, I beat them up too quick. I know some people, you, I, I just, I don't like them. Uh, hey, Beth Douglas, uh, we are in um, Tampa in Seminole Heights. Uh, we are not a nursery that's open to the public. I do operate out of my home. Uh, however, uh, we, we, we push all of our sales through our website, um, or you can contact us through phone, 813-803-0024. Uh, uh, if you're on our website and logged into Facebook, you can message us directly off of uh, the website. Um, obviously, you can reach us through Facebook Messenger. Um, and then email is info, I-N-F-O at witwomorganics.com. Any of those ways is a great way um, to, to reach out. I believe we answer the phones Monday through Saturday from nine to five. Um, so if you have any questions about navigating the website or need any advice or help picking out your plant seeds or other gardening supplies, please, please, please feel free to uh, reach out. But if you are local and don't wanna pay for shipping, we do have a pickup option at checkout. Um, once you click on that and, uh, give us a couple days, we'll get your order together. We'll reach out to you when your order's ready and, um, and figure out about when you're coming. And then we put your order out front for you to pick up, um, or for someone else to pick up. If you were tuned in earlier when I was talking about my, um, my thievery experience. Um, but no, we're just trying to narrow down the time that you're coming. So we don't run into that problem anymore. Um, and then, um, yeah, when we find out you're coming, we'll put your order out front for you to pick up. It's completely contactless, um, which some people are really digging. And then other people, you know, they really want to go walk around a nursery and look at plants and touch plants. And we are not that place. <laughs> if you're looking for contactless, uh, uh, 1130 at night while you're laying in your bed, uh, nursery shopping, then Witwam Organics uh, online is the way to go. <laughs> Hey, uh, I, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but it's Gregorio. Um, if you want to bring us seeds, um, you know, I love that. Probably what I do is if you have a few seeds, um, we're, we're going to still charge you the same for, um, 
for for the uh, actual starts because it's really uh, it's all about labor materials real estate on the seed tables it's not the actual cost of the seeds but what i'd really like to do would be to get a, a few from you um and give you a few of ours and get them started um that we could that we could actually uh hold on to and check out because like i said i've identified at least three types of florida cranberry uh jamaican sorrel uh for anybody who um is is just tuning in um that has a lot of different properties and i've literally been growing them side by side and had some you know uh doing really well uh producing earlier and then some start producing later some with um, them in clusters of three or four uh some with big round uh lobe leaves some with uh more okra looking leaves um the weird part is, is when I start digging around into in and and trying to find out if there's actually uh, named uh, subspecies of of the Florida cranberry, I can't find it. So maybe on a local level, that's something that uh, people who are growing the different types of Florida cranberry, or if you know, guys, if you know 100% the names of the different subspecies of of the Florida cranberry, I'd really like to find out because I'm just trying to narrow it down. I feel like we're all kind of shooting off the hip on this one, and it's such a great crop it's so productive um if you haven't heard of the uh, florida cranberry it's we're kind of getting into the last uh part of the summer for you to get them in the ground so you can enjoy your fall harvest um it's hibiscus if you've ever drinking uh like hibiscus tea um it's got the little dried red things in it that's actually the the calyx, calyx of the of the flower so it's the outer casing of the flower bud um, it's actually not the flower petals. It's not the um, it's not the actual flower bud. Um, it's it's a, the casing that grows around the flower bud. It opens up, flowers uh, gets pollinated. The flower shrivels up and dies, and then actually closes back up and begins swelling uh, up with fluid. And it really does taste like um, like cranberry. We actually have tried a couple dishes with it that we um, that called for rhubarb, and we used it as a rhubarb uh, replacement, and it was freaking amazing um kenny already had one produce uh this month i'd really you know i've heard them producing in the spring but like i said before they're daylight sensitive so if they are doing a, a light flush in, in the spring my guess is that when you do your fall uh, flush it would be exactly the same number of days away from the summer solstice but um Man, if you had one that actually uh, just produced this month, I'd really like to. I'd really like to get a hold of that. Hey guys, it is starting to rain. Plus, we're out of time, and I'm sitting out here with my laptop. Uh, my phone will be fine. It's waterproof. Um, but please, if you don't know if you can tune in, um, if you're if you're watching this on on rerun and you have garden questions or you have garden topics, you can send them to info at witwomorganics.com. I will pull up the email and go over the questions and cover your questions in my next session. And then you can go back and watch it later if you can't join us on Wednesdays at 530. But if you can, we will be here live. Have a good night, guys.